A timeline is one good tool to tell a story about a sequence of events that happened or will happen in the future. Knowing that NightLab has created one of the best libraries, if not the best, to generate amazing interactive timelines that you can embed in your website so easily. Timeline.js is trusted by more than 250k websites, including vastly popular ones such as Time, CNN, Mashable, and Le Monde. So without further ado, let's get our hands dirty. There are a handful of ways to create a timeline with Timeline.js. The first and the easiest one is to use the Timeline Builder on their website. To do that, we firstly need to use a Google Spreadsheet template that they provide. Now, each row of the spreadsheet represents an event in the timeline, while columns represent dates, texts, media, etc. We'll get into the details of each of them in a second. So for now, let's delete the example, and while doing so, we need to make sure to not touch the very first row, because without it, the timeline will not be created. The minimum thing to do to create a timeline is to fill a row with a year, because that's the only required field, except one case, we'll get into it later. Now, having a blank slide in the timeline is pointless, so to fill it with some information, we should type some text in the headline in the text fields. We are able to override the dates with a custom format or text by filling the display date field. That done, we can create another slide, but in this case, we can set a period of time for the event by filling a start and an end dates. Now, the most fun part is media. This field is where we can add different type of visuals, such as videos from different sources like YouTube or Vimeo, images, Google Maps, and even sound from SoundCloud, etc. In this case, let's use an image from Flickr, which is a photos sharing platform. An important thing to keep in mind is that we can use HTML code instead of plain text in any field and it will work. The thumbnail is a little image which appears on the bubble in the timeline nav. Wikipedia pages are another type of media that you can add to your slides. Again, we can also add a Google map on a slide. Then we have background which refers to the background of a slide. Here we can set the hexadecimal code of a color or a picture. We have also the group column which assembles events that have the same group name in the timeline nav. And then there is also the type field which highlights a certain period of time in the timeline if it's set to error. Finally, we can create a sort of a cover to the timeline. It's a slide that describes the timeline and it's the only one that doesn't require a date. Now that we prepared the spreadsheet, we need to publish it. To do that, go to File, Publish on the Web, choose OD1 in the drop-down list, and hit Publish. That done, we need to copy the link to the spreadsheet. Don't do it from this box, this one will not work. Instead, copy it from the address bar of the navigator. Now we need to go back to the Timeline.js website and paste the link. From there, we can do some tweaks, like choosing the height and width of the timeline, the font, language, etc. Then hit preview to see the result. The last step you need to do is to just copy the link of your timeline and paste it in the platform you are using.
The second method of using Timeline.js gives more room to customizations and overall control. However, this method requires you to have basic knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript coding. So if you don't, then unfortunately you should stick to the first method only. First things first, we need to copy the necessary links to the library CSS and JavaScript core code. The next step is to create a container element for the timeline and give it an ID. Next, we need to create an instance of the timeline class. The constructor method takes three arguments. The first one is the ID we've just set to the container. The second one is the link to the spreadsheet. The last is an optional argument. We'll get into it in just a second. Now let's save. And there we go, we got our timeline working as intended. Back to the third argument, it's an object that we can use to customize the timeline, like change the duration between slides, or maybe set the timeline to be starting from the last slide, or at a certain one. There is a full list of the options on the documentation, you'll find the link to it in the description below. Having said that, there are some properties that are related to the CSS of the timeline elements like the height and width, yet I still don't recommend using them because they are a bit confusing, well, at least for me. So instead, I suggest you to change the style directly using CSS. So for example, if you want to change the timeline height, you can use the TL timeline class. If you want to change the background of the slides, you can use the TL slide class. You can change the style of pretty much everything in the timeline using the list of classes they already provide in a list on their documentation. Again, link in the description. So up until now we have been using a Google spreadsheet to get the data, but if you're not a fan of that, I have good news for you, because we can also feed the timeline with data using the JSON format. To do that, we need to pass an object to the constructor instead of the link to the spreadsheet. That being said, that object must be built following certain rules regarding the keys of the properties and their values. For example, our data object must contain a property that has events as key, which value must be an array of events. An event or a slide is basically one row in the spreadsheet. So let's create our first event. It's an object which itself must be built following some guidelines. The start date, for example, is an object composed of properties that represent the date and time of a slide. We use the display date field to change the format of the date here, so we need to look for the corresponding key in the list. Then we have the headline and the description text which are two properties placed under the text object.
Then we have media which is also an object that has all kind of information regarding the image or whatever media we are adding to the slide. By the way, some fields accept markup, thus we can add HTML tags within a string and they will be converted automatically to HTML when displayed on the page. Then we have the background which is an object with the URL property since we are using an image. We have also group which value must be a string. Now that we prepared the first event, we can add it to the events array and that's it. Let's add another event. And here in the second row we have two dates, so we need to see what property we should use to add the second date. The rest is pretty much the same. Now let's see how to add other types of slides and let's begin with errors. So to add an error we need to use the key errors which takes a list of objects each composed of three properties start date, end date and text. There we go, that blue line represents the error we've just created. Now it's time to create a title slide. Again, looking at the documentation, as you see, we need to add a title property to our data object. The title property takes a slide object like other events, however, the dates don't have any use, so we should just skip them. And there we have it. And this is it for this tutorial, so make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.